more representations of God the Father. I like these representations. I like the triangle idea. I mean, I don't know why God is wearing a triangular hat. It's a, kind of a strange fashion choice. But I think it's associated with the idea of the pyramid. And I think that's associated with the idea of the hierarchy of authority. And I think that's why the Egyptians put their pharaohs inside pyramids. I know there's more to it than that. But I think some of that has to do with the notion of this hierarchical structure. You see this on the... Now, that's speculative, obviously, and I don't want to make too much of it, but, but I can't help but think that there's something to that. See, that's on the back of the American dollar bill. I like that a lot. That's like the eye of Horus from the Egyptians. And so the idea here is something like, at the top of the hierarchy is something that is no longer part of the hierarchy. Right? So if you move up the hierarchy enough, what happens is that you develop the ability, as a consequence of moving up that hierarchy, to be detached enough from the hierarchy so you're no longer really part of it, and so that you can move in all sorts of different hierarchies. And the thing, the idea here is that the thing that you're really developing is the capacity to pay attention. And I would say, from a, from a mythological perspective, the, the one thing that seems to compete with the idea of the spoken word as the, as the source of the extraction of habitable order from chaos is the I, is the capacity to pay attention. So Marduk, for example, the Mesopotamian creator god, who, who, who emerged in the hierarchy of Mesopotamian gods and came out at the top, right? He was the victor of the gods. He had eyes all the way around his head and he could speak magic words. And I really like that. I really like that idea. And, and the Egyptians developed that idea too because their god Horus was the eye. Everyone knows the eye of Horus. That, 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 that image is so compelling that we still know about it. Everybody has seen the eye of Horus with a really open pupil. And what the Egyptians learned was that the open eye was what revivified the dead society. It's so smart. So what do you do if your life isn't in order? Bloody well, pay attention. And that isn't the same as thinking. It's a different process. Paying attention, thinking is like the imposition of structure in some sense. I know I'm oversimplifying, but paying attention is something like watching for what you don't know. And so like one of the things I often recommend to my clinical clients if they're having trouble with a family member is, number one, shut up. Don't tell them anything about yourself. Just, and I don't mean in a rude way. It's just like no more personal information. Number two, watch them like a hawk and listen. And if you do that long enough, they will tell you exactly what they're up to. And they will also tell you who they think you are. And then you'll be shocked because they think you're something, generally speaking, that's not like you, what you are at all. And when they tell you, it's like a revelation to both of you. But attention is an unbelievably powerful force. And you see this in psychotherapy too, because a lot of what you do, and in any reparative relationship, is really pay attention to the other person. Pay attention and listen. And you, you would not believe what people will tell you or reveal to you if you watch them as if you want to know, instead of watching them so that you'll have your prejudices reinforced. That's usually how people interact. It's like, I want to keep thinking about you the way I'm thinking about you, and so I'm going to filter out anything that disproves my theory. That's not what I'm talking about at all. It's like, I'm going to watch you and figure out what you're up to. Not in a rude way, none of that. I just want to see what's there. And that'll be good for you, probably, and also be good for me. And so, well, so that's the idea that, you know, climbing up a hierarchy of authority can give you vision, and that vision can transcend the actual hierarchy. And I think that's also the, I think that's also the, uh, that's the metaphysical space that an artist occupies. Because artists really aren't in a hierarchy, they're outside of hierarchies. You've watched The Lion King, most of you? Yeah, that's Zazu, you know, the little bird that's the eye of the king? That's the same thing there. So, and that's, that's echoed in this idea as well.